I'm Aviva from the Ed Asner Family Center, and I am here today to do some crafts with you guys, okay? So, to get started, we are going to talk about what we're doing, all right? So, it's been such a lovely time being in this weather here in the San Fernando Valley, and since Mother's Day is coming up, I think we're going to take this lovely spring day to make a present for your mom. Wherever takes care of you, you know? This is just a present, this could be a present for anyone you love, even if that's yourself, you know? I love making art for just me sometimes. So, what we're going to be doing, we are going to start with our materials, but first, we are going to be seeing our final result. We are going to be making a homemade flower and a lovely vase for her to live in. Alrighty. To get started with our materials, we are going to need Starting with our vase, we are going to be needing, this is what it's going to look like in the end, but we are going to be needing one mason jar, a paper bowl, any type of paintbrush. Ma, I'm actually using a special glue paintbrush with thicker bristles that help get make cleaning a little bit easier in the end. Uh, some water. Um, some Elmer's glue, oh. <laughs> scissors, and some tissue paper. So you're probably thinking, Aviva, this is crazy. Some of the art stores are, all of the art stores are closed. How am I going to get all this stuff to make this project? And a lot of this is easily found at home. So you don't need a giant bucket like how I have of this here sticky milk. <laughs> and you can also get any type of bowl at home. Even a, your uh, regular plastic or glass bowls at home are good to use. This is just um, one that I'm going to be able to throw away later on. Tissue paper. Hopefully you have an old present or something laying, laying uh, anywhere in your house. Uh, all you need is very thin paper, if tissue paper isn't what you have, you, you gotta use with what you got, you know? So, mason jar, you can find any old jam jar and save it, clean it out, take that label off and you're good to go. We're using a smaller, kind of decorative mason jar today, and we're using a smaller one because I think for our popsicle sticks here, oops, didn't say that that was another one of our materials, but for our popsicle sticks, you can see that they're a little bit short. So we want to make sure our flower head is able to stick out of the top of our jar. All right. So I've got a lot of colors here today, but I'm going to go with our green for stem. But we'll start that after we finish our first project here with our glass jar. So as you see here, I took a few different colors of tissue paper and I cut them into strips. So what you want to do is you want to clear your space of all the materials that you're not using. All right, and all you're going to be needing is your tissue paper first. So I am going, I already cut out some long strips and we are going to be lining them up, making sure that the tips all connect flattening them out and I'm going to be cutting all the way down the line okay little squares it doesn't matter what shape they are they don't have to be perfect squares because you're going to be gluing them down later okay so I'm going to be taking my scissors holding towards the middle and I'm going to be doing some cuts all right all the way down the bottom my hand down as I go. All right, it's very satisfying to do this too. See, I even have some big pieces and that doesn't matter. It'll just also fill up more space on your jar. So I've got some last few big pieces here. Just gonna cut them in half and there you go. You got some confetti. And this is gonna be our colors for our jar. All right, this is a type of Mod Podge. I don't know if I mentioned that. So what we're going to be doing to make our homemade Mod Podge is we are going to be taking our Elmer's glue and we're going to be adding 
about a tablespoon of our Elmer's glue into our bowl and also an, a, the same amount of water. So we're gonna about to do like about a tablespoon of water too. I'm not gonna measure it out. I, I'm just gonna eyeball it. It really depends on how big your mason jar is because we are going to be covering our whole outside. So you really don't have to make a lot of our mixture unless you plan on making a lot of jars, which is also a great idea too. Make them for everyone you love. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna take my big jar here. I'm using two hands, hopefully. You can also just use the regular squeeze one. This is just my big art room jug. And there we go, I'm gonna add about a splash, tablespoon splash, all right, of our Elmer's glue. Can you see that? It's about a tablespoon. I'm gonna put my cap back on here. Alrighty. Move that to the side. I'm going to take my water and pour in about the same amount of glue that I have in there, okay? Very nice. All right, move that water out of the way. Don't want any spills. And I'm going to take my glue brush or any other brush that you have at home would work too. Just make sure to really wash it out with some soap. A good idea to wash your brushes is to take a bar of soap and to just really rub it onto the bar and that really gets all the way down into the bristles once you're done. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna start mixing my Mod Podge concoction. And you're gonna mix it until it's the glue is fully dissolved into the water. So it's very, it's gonna be kind of liquidy at the end. All right, that looks pretty good. So since we're using Elmer's glue today and not real Mod Podge, our final result is going to be a little bit, it's not gonna be so shiny, okay? It's gonna turn out pretty matte. But if you can, if you have time to order on Amazon or anywhere online um, some Mod Podge, there's also like a clear coat kind of shiny um, version that you can get that's that might be a little bit better for this project. But we're working with what we got, so let's keep moving. So we've got our concoction, we've got our jar, and we've got our paper here. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be leaving my jar on the table, using my hand to hold it down and keeping it sturdy, while I take my Mod Podge, and I'm going to be, whoa, let me just move that up a little bit, and I'm going to be covering all of the sides. I'm gonna be lifting mine up for you guys today so you can see what I'm doing. But at home, you're gonna to wanna to keep it flat on the table and really just turn and paint. So see, I'm only gonna do, I'm only painting half of my glass right now because you don't want it to dry by the time you get to that at that side of the jar. So since I have half of my jar already painted, I'm going to start just laying down my tissue paper anywhere I want. See, I'm layering it as well. This tissue paper is so thin that it also kind of gets a little bit, it kind of seeps all the way through our tissue paper here. So you can really layer that up. You want to cover the whole jar though. Really give it that stained glass kind of look. All right, so I'm gonna cover this whole jar here and then meet back with you in a second. All righty. All right, now that I've got half of my jar done, I am going to make sure that all of these edges are down and I'm going to be painting on top of those dry corners. I'm not using too much glue or I will make this thin tissue paper rip. So really light layers of glue. All right, now I'm gonna flip it around and do the same exact thing on the other side of the jar. This first layer, you can put a good, a good amount of glue on. All right.
All right, now that I've got my full jar covered, you see here on the top I have some loose pieces right here. Oops, I forgot a little corner. So what I'm going to be doing with these top pieces is I'm going to be taking my glue and I'm going to be folding it in. Just kind of really, I'm going on the edges here and then I'm taking my paintbrush and kind of pushing it down. I'm doing the same thing as well with all these other dry corners here that I didn't really get any glue spots on. So I'm covering all those corners. So see, my jar is so wet right now with our Mod Podge that I'm going to just leave it alone now while I let it dry. Your hands might be a little bit gluey, so I recommend giving them a little bit of a rub. Kind of makes all the glue kind of roll off your hands, and I'm going to be cleaning up my space now that I've got my jar complete. See how I kind of chose different colors as I went around, so it's not all green on one side. You want to be switching it up as you lay your colors down. All right, so now I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to move it to the side. And I'm, we're going to move on to our flower now, okay? So just to clean up our area, I'm going to be moving our glue out of the way, the rest of our confetti. And you want to remember to make sure you not really... I'm going to use my extra tissue paper here to cover up our glue, okay? Because I don't want any glue on our flower, okay? You might want to, if you're home, just pick up this plastic wrap and move it out of the way. Alrighty, so here is our flower that we're going to be making. All you're going to be needing is three different colors that you will be wanting. So a color for, oops, not that one. We don't need any green today because we have our lovely popsicle sticks here. I'm taking my green popsicle stick for a stem. I am having a color for the middle little pollen part of our flower and another color for our petals. Okay, so two different types of paper, a green popsicle stick, or if you have a pencil at home and you don't have any popsicle sticks, you can just paint a pencil green. And I'm going to have some markers as well if you want to do a little decoration on the middle of your flower. I made a little face. All right, let's get started. So we are going to start with our flower part of our little project here. So I'm going to be taking my middle color that I want, whatever color you want for this middle pollen part, I'm going to be taking my paper and folding it in half. So I'm going to be finding the corners on the other side, holding that side with my finger, and flattening down that middle part there, just like so. And this will make it easier if you are trying to cut a lot of things that are the same size all at once. So you don't have to be struggling to try and copy the same shape that you just made. So I've folded my paper and I'm going to be using, I'm going to you find anything circle, I'm going to be using our example jar here. Anything with a nice round bottom, I'm going to be placing it down on my paper and I'm going to be tracing around my jar all the way. No. Now that I look at it though, this might be too big of a circle. So you can find something a little bit smaller. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to find a smaller kind of circle. I don't have a circle that's small enough to fit right here. It's going to be about the size, let's see, what is this the size of? About the size of like maybe like two quarters, I guess. It's, it's really not super, super large. You want to make sure that it's not big, unless you want to make a giant flower. That's up to you. So we're going to be making a medium-sized circle here. If you find us something at home that kind of fits this size, you can use that and help you make that circle. So I'm going to be taking my scissors here. I'm going to be starting on the edge 
And an easy way to cut a round circle is taking your scissors and, go, and cutting all the way to that circle there and turning the paper as you go. See, I'm turning and I'm cutting. And I'm getting all the way around, following my line until I reach my beginning cut. And now you should have two circles ready to go. Okay, now I'm going to take my two circles and I'm going to leave one in my crafting space and one to the side. And now to make the petals, you're going to take your paper piece. Actually, let's move all of those out of the way. We're going to take our paper piece and we are going to be doing the same exact thing that we did with the blue, folding our paper in half. I'm going to once again put my finger here to keep my paper in the right spot and fold across the crease there. All right, now that you have a half piece of paper, you are going to find the fold, the fold that's not the open side. So you want to find the spot that's like the edge, like where, like the spine of the book almost. So, and you're going to be cutting off that fold. So you have two open pieces of paper. All right, now that I have that cut, I am going to be folding my paper in half one more time. And I'm going to be cutting out long strips coming down. So if you have a ruler, if you have a book, anything, with a straight edge, I'm going to be taking it and making about an inch. I'm going to make lines an inch apart from each other for our petals. So depending on how thick you want your petals to be, you can make them like about two inches. But then you'll only have enough space for a few petals if you make your petals super thick, OK? So we're going to be doing about one inch petals. And now that you have your lines drawn, you're going to take your scissors once again, find the middle of your fold here, like the spine of your book, and you're going to be cutting down the middle. So you have, once again, loose pieces of paper, making sure they're not connected. All right. Now holding the edge here, I'm going to be cutting up these lines here. Alrighty, now that I have so many petal pieces, I'm definitely not going to use all of them, but you can definitely use the extras for another flower if you want to make a bouquet. Okay, so I'm going to be taking this pile, I'm going to be putting it right here, so it's right next to our picture. Hopefully this, this glue is dry here, we can move this out of the way. And we are going to get started making our petals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first circle here and I'm going to be covering it with some glue, okay? We're not using our liquid Elmer's glue anymore. I'm using a glue stick. But if all you have is liquid glue, that'll work too. You might need to hold it for a little bit longer. For some reason, I feel like glue sticks dry a little bit quicker. Less liquidy. So I'm going to be taking my first petal and I'm going to be folding it in half but not really bending this crease here. I'm keeping it round. And I'm going to be opening it up once again, gluing that edge, the inside, and I'm going to be folding it over and connecting. And I'm going to be doing that for all of these pieces here. Okay. So I'm going to be, once you are done folding and gluing, you're going to be adding it to your flower, okay? We're going to be doing that for all of them. So taking your piece, gluing the edge, fold, 
Wah! Folding it over and adding it to our circle. See how I added more glue because I'm going to be layering my folds. Make sure that they're as close together as can be. And you're gonna do that until you get all the way back around to your original petal, okay? Right now that I've got every single one of my petals glued down and layered on top of each other, I am going to be adding on our stem. Okay, so I'm going to be taking my colored stem. You really can use any color. I'm using green, and you're going to be gluing on just the top. So I'm going to be taking my stick, gluing only this top little corner here, closing my glue and finding which petals are kind of the furthest away and really just squishing that down there, okay? Now that you have all three of those connected, you're going to take your final circle here, move your flower out of the way, and if you wanted to make a face, now would be the perfect time. I'm gonna go for a pink, a little smile, and some eyes. Nothing too detailed. My mom loves anything I make her, so I'm sure no matter what you make, she'll love it. All right, you're going to be adding glue onto the back of your little smiley face or just plain old circle. And you're going to be just putting it right there in the middle. All righty, so cute. Now that you have your little flower here, you can add on some leaves if you'd like. I'm going to be grabbing my green piece of paper. This part is optional. If you want a leafless flower, that's just fine. I am once again folding my paper in half. Curve. Uh, turning it to the side here so that my fold is on the left and I'm going to be making an oval with a point on the end. So I'm going to be making one C shape and another C shape but without connecting I'm going to be leaving some space here on this like fold that we have and connecting those together just like so. And now to cut those off cut this out, we're going to be leaving this space uncut and following our lines all the way to the corner. Alrighty. So you can decorate your leaf with a little leaf vein in the middle if you'd like to. And you can add that onto your flower. So I'm going to be putting this behind my stem. I'm going to be adding a little glue dot right to the middle. And I'm going to put it right behind my flower. Kind of makes it look like little arms too. You want to put it kind of high up as well because when you put it into our final project, into our jar that we made, we want to make sure that he's able to sit in there. And there you have it. We have our little Mother's Day gift, very colorful. 
very beautiful, very springy. And if you feel like your flower is kind of tipping over, you can add some pebbles or sand or real dirt. Anything would be fine, just to keep that sturdy in your cup. Just don't add water or that will ruin your project. Alrighty. And there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed our project today. And we are going to be making crafts every single Saturday. I hope you come and join us again. Next week we're going to be making something super awesome. And we'll see you next time.